Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here at the Rosa String Works Workshop. Got a uh, Morgan Monroe mandolin here. It is a it is a model MM-550F. It has a serial number in there, but I don't think that'll do much good for you. Um, it's uh, obviously an F style, F holes. Um, you know, I always like to just give a quick observation when I take one out of the box or whatever, just to see. This one came from Owensboro, Kentucky, by the way. And the things I see on it that, uh, you know, I know can be improved immediately are uh, the bridge is crazy high. Now, you know, Randy Shardiger and I have talked about, uh, you know, height of bridges. And, and it certainly is a good thing to have a, you know, high bridge, but there is a diminishing point of return. It, especially on mandolins, if you get them too high, and this one's too high, I believe, they'll start to sound like you're playing in a barrel. Um, it, it sounds kind of hollow. Um, you can, if you can see close here, this one here is raised up off of the uh, off of the base by, oh, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch, maybe. And, um, and then that makes it kind of un you know sturdy too it's it's wobbly like that um the uh you know in this case that makes this action crazy high here um you know you could as my late mother would have said you could throw a dog through there <laughs> you know pretty much could throw a dog through there i think in this case it's pretty high now I'll read you the note uh, that the customer sent. It said, uh, now, today is uh, Wednesday, December 7th, D uh, Pearl Harbor Day. And uh, I'll give a shout out to the veterans out there. And uh, I remember my good friend, Walt Henry, who was a uh, Pearl Harbor veteran. He was on the Oklahoma um, when the attack occurred. And uh, he survived and he lived a yeah, well into his 90s and passed away just a couple of years back. Uh, miss him a lot. He was a nice man. Anyway, uh, Glenn said, uh, this is, letter is dated uh, December 1st, and he said, I spoke to you the first part of the week about this. It's a 550F Morgan Monroe mandolin. I want to set up. I prefer low action, and we're a long way from that right now. <laughs> so we, we can only improve it. <laughs> we're not going to make it any worse, I guarantee it. Um, he says scallop, so I take that to mean he wants this scalloped out more. Uh, it, it has a little bit of scalloping, but it's just right at the very tip, and uh, we'll pull those decorative frets out of there. That's what I call them, those little short frets that nobody uses anyway, and we'll pull those out of there, and we'll scallop all of that, and they make that look a lot better. He says, I would prefer lighter strings than are on it. Um... You know, I you know there's where I would have to differ with him. Uh, if anything, I would I always recommend the heavier strings, and the reason is a couple of well, there's several reasons. You get more volume. Uh, they last longer. They uh, you know they stay in tune better. You don't break them as much. You know, there's just all kinds of reasons why I like the heavier string. Now, granted, your mandolin has to be able to handle it, and I don't think there would be a problem with this one handling that. Um. I'm sure, or at least I feel fairly certain, that the reason he wants lighter strings is because it feels so hard to play now. Once I get it set up really well, I think that the, and I'm not necessarily talking heavy strings, but I do think the standard medium strings will be perfectly fine on this mandolin. I don't think he'll even realize they're, that they're, that, you know, what I call the heavy medium, if you will. Uh, and I'm just talking J74s or A270s from, from GHS. The, the J74s are from Diodario, and the A270s are from uh, GHS. And either one of those uh, phosphor bronze would be just fine. But uh, my goodness, uh, if we get the action way down lower, he'll think he's got a lot of lighter strings on here. So I, you know, I'll talk to him about the lighter strings just to make sure, but uh, I would prefer not to put light strings on them. It really makes them found, sound thin and tinny. So if you, if, you know, if, you, if, if you're going for those high sounds, well, then the light strings are going to do what you want. 
Okay, it says the nut seems to have the strings cut too deep, but not too sure. And I look at that and, no, I, I mean, deep, yeah, sort of, but they're not that deep. Um, you know, it's not that big a deal. It really isn't. Um, they're just about maybe a hair deeper than average, but they're not deep. Um, he says, call me if you have any questions. He also asked about a pick guard, and if I have any, and I don't have any pick guards. I have made custom pick guards for instruments like this in the past, and of course, if I make one, well, we're running into some money, because it's a time-consuming project, and you have to get all the supplies in and things. Um, perhaps we could buy one for it. I don't know. I haven't looked into that. I do. I prefer no pick guard myself on a mandolin I, because the strings are pretty high off the body, and I don't have a flailing uh, wrist, and I'm not going to scratch it. So, you know, I I don't need the pick guard. You know, I know some people do though. So, you know, I don't have a problem with somebody needs a pick guard, but. But in this case, uh, I don't have one. I'm not really ready to put one on here uh, without looking into it further. And uh, the only other thing I see on the mandolin, and I can't really say this is true, but the neck angle looks a little bit flat on it to me. Um, but it may not be. It may be okay. It, it just kind of it just kind of appears like the neck angle's a little flat, and, and and it maybe should be just a hair more like that. But not that's not significant. It's not a big deal. Looking down it, um, fretboard appears pretty flat, so I don't see a real problem there. I'm not really sure why the action is this high. Um, getting back to the action again, when you're talking about high action. And as, as you'll note that Randy Schardiger has addressed this on guitars, um, high action gives you more pressure down on your top. Um, it's going to make your top vibrate a little bit more. You're going to get a little bit woodier sound. Uh, you're going to get a little more volume because of it. So here's my rule of thumb. And it's just a rule of thumb. You always have to take into consideration your playing style, your kind of instrument, you know, and on and on and on. There's a million things to take into consideration, but the rule of thumb is get the action as low as you can get it here, play it as high as you can stand to play it back here, and still play it cleanly and still be able to note it cleanly. Okay? So the rule of thumb is, you know, the, the key words are cleanly now, you know, you know, you don't want to be playing it so high that you can't note it right and you can't play it correctly and all that kind of stuff. But the general rule of thumb is get it as low as you can get it here, play it as high as you can stand to play it back here, and play it well. This, that's just the general rule of thumb because it puts more pressure down on your top, makes the wood vibrate a little bit better, and that kind of thing. Okay. Um... But this one certainly isn't uh, certainly isn't low. <laughs> so we've got a long ways to go down on this one. Like I said, on a mandolin especially, when you get them real high, then the um, you start uh, hearing um, that barrel sound. It just really sounds hollow. You you can tell when they're too high. You don't get that real punch. Down the road, I am going to put out, if I can ever get caught up enough, I'm going to put out a video just talking about bridges and saddles on all the various instruments. And uh, kind of as a, Randy kind of asked people to chime in on that, he had uh, put a video out a little while back about that. So I intended to do that before my PC broke, but uh, as a matter of fact, I was just getting ready to do it, and then the PC broke, literally. So I've been playing catch-up ever since. Okay, well, we'll get to it. I just put a piece of felt on here that wraps around the end here just a little bit. Um, the customer had a piece of felt here, but it didn't wrap over the edge, and the edge is where the strings actually hit. Um, I'm also going to put, and there was no felt on this part, I'm also going to put a piece of felt across here, which uh, sandwiches the strings between the felt then, and it cuts down on any extra vibration and rattling and that sort of thing. I will say that this cover was really hard to get off, a um, little extra hard. You don't want them loose, obviously, uh, so they fall off, but man, this one's really crazy tight. 
So I may uh, try to adjust that a little bit too. Um, it's really, really tight. Just even starting it on there, it gets tight very fast. So anyway, we'll work on that a little bit and see if we can make that a little better. Okay. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and pull these uh, last four little frets here and we're going to scallop this all out. Got these little nippers that I ground to a razor edge there that just reach right under the fret and pulls them right out without any problem at all. Okay, we got those out. They go in the trash. And now we'll get the tool out to scallop that down. thin uh, not not too thin but it's getting pretty thin so I'm going to stop there and do the rest by hand just so I don't make a mistake and uh, got to get rid of all of that extra dust there brush that off down into the trash can people often say I should save that dust because I need it for fill well trust me folks I got more saved than I'll ever use single-edge razor blade and see if I can finish this up. It's, it's right on the edge of being finished, but it's I'm a little bit leery because it's getting pretty darn deep. Those are some pretty deep grooves. Got it there, and it looks pretty good. Now we'll just clean it up. Okay, we'll just level the frets out now, just to make sure they're good and level. The fretboard itself looks pretty flat, so I don't think we got any big issues there. <laughs> As often is the case, there was quite a bit of a hump in this area here, more than I really even noticed just looking down. Of course, the strings were on it when I looked down it. Now I see that it looks pretty flat with the exception of, I gotta put my finger on the one that's the exception. Right in here, there's a little bit of a high or a low spot right here. It's just not perfectly level with the rest of it, I can tell. Actually, I can see right here it's low and it's not even been filed yet. That looks good. Now we will recrown them. Yeah, it probably couldn't have been set down real low uh, the way those frets were just kind of unlevel there. So, but now we should be able to set the action down real low. Even though the fretboard is good and flat and the uh, neck looks good and straight. I'm going to check the truss rod just to be sure there's nothing going on down in there. This truss rod cover, I don't know, just looks backwards compared to most truss rod covers, but that's the way it's on there, so I guess we'll call that the way it goes. But usually the bigger end is near the nut and the little end is at the other end, but uh, 
This one's backwards from that, so. Anyway, not a big deal. Okay, it has got takes an Allen wrench that goes up inside there, so let me just find one that fits. Okay, I just checked it, and it feels nice and snug, so I'm not going to tighten it anymore. I just made sure it's absolutely snug, and it is. And to address the customer's last concern, um, he was concerned that the slots are probably too deep on this nut. And I've already said they're a little on the deep side. They're not real bad, but uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can't uh, work on that just a little bit too. Yeah, the uh, the D's look awful deep after uh, looking at it again, but we'll see. They may not be. We'll just have to wait until we try stringing it up and see how that goes. We've got this Morgan Monroe all fixed up nice. Look at the action now. It's much, much lower. Uh, you can see it's just barely off of, the, off of the base now. It's only off the base by about a... Oh, I don't know. Down over here, it's almost touching the base. Over here, it's about a sixteenth of an inch high. Now keep in mind, it was at least three sixteenths of an inch high. So we've really lowered it down. We lowered it down more than an eighth of an inch. And uh, it'll hold a pick at the seventh fret, which is what I like to see. Um, so it'll hold a pick there with no problem. It's incredibly low action up here, which was already done. I didn't have to change this up here, although I did file the nut down quite a bit to make the string grooves so a lot shallower. Um, the string grooves back here are actually a hair deep, but it's not that big a deal. And uh, we scalloped this all out. This thing went from a sow's ear to a silk purse, and I mean literally. I mean, it really sounds good. It's got a real nice sound. Plays like a dream. This thing really sounds good. I, I tell you what, I guess I would recommend a Morgan Monroe uh, MM-550F. Uh, that's what this one is. Of course, it took quite a bit of setup. It came in with about as poor a setup as it could have, and it's leaving with a very good setup. It's, it's really... The customer asked me to put a pick guard on this, so a few days ago I ordered this pick guard, and uh, I like to put them underneath the fretboard. Um, unfortunately, the way this pick guard's made, and the way it attaches, if I put it under the under the fretboard with these two pins that are in here, if I put it under the fretboard, then I'm going to be hitting this big bump right here, and it just won't lay right. I'm going to have to think on it a little bit. Well, I've made up my mind how I'm doing this. I've actually already drilled one hole in the side of here. I went ahead and drilled it into the... Uh, little knob that sticks out there and the other one's going to miss it and go underneath the fretboard behind it and uh, I've already marked it by just pushing it in here and letting the tip of it mark it and now I'm going to drill it with this with this uh, Dremel tool. I had to take the knob off the Dremel tool here to give me more clearance so I don't scratch the instrument up. It won't be an easy drill to do this but we're going to give it our best shot. Here we go. I'm just going to put the screw in the hole here. Should work out pretty good, I would hope. <clears throat> There's just a little bit of clearance from the top, about a, oh, 
not quite an eighth of an inch, but there's a pretty good amount of clearance there, so I think we're okay on the top. Now we'll put this in place and the tricky part, this here is, is bent down a little bit. It's not quite at the right angle. I uh, tried to bend it back a little bit in the vise a little while ago and I got it close but it needs to be bent just a little bit in order to work correctly. Wrench is not cooperating here. We're pretty close now. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It actually looks like it matches up to the top pretty good. <laughs> I'm tempted to put the glue on there and then sit this down on it like that, and I think that might be as good as it gets. The only other problem with this, too, not knowing what kind of plastic this is, and I'm assuming it's ABS plastic or a PVC type plastic now, where it's not the acetone type plastic like it used to be. I might be able to glue this with acetone, but I don't have much faith of it sticking to the wood. So I've got an acetone based glue that's supposed to be good for wood and plastic both. So I guess that's what I'll use rather than just plain acetone. And we'll see how it goes. Mounting this here will be another lesson in creative clamping. What I've done is I put a piece of leather under here that's a solid, pretty thick piece of leather. It just happens to hold that at the right exact angle to match this up. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue on there, put this in, set it down and then I'm just going to set something heavy on this for a day you know for 24 hours and let it just set up. I just have to find me something small but heavy to, that I can set right here. I've got a mock-up of how I'm going to glue it and, and what I'm going to use for a weight here and this is a pretty heavy piece of steel it's pretty heavy and I have a piece of leather on top of there piece of leather under here and this matches up with this real flush so I think we're in good shape I'm going to just about ready to give it a shot so we're going to put a little glue right on here try to coat it but not get it too heavy not too thick but a good coat And we'll try to put this in without touching that glue until we get it in place and then let it drop down right on top of there. And it seemed like it did that just fine. Now I'm feeling a little bit of rocking going on on this side of the instrument. So I'm going to lay this towel under here. At least I think I am. just to tip it up a little bit. I'll put my piece of leather directly over the thing we're gluing and put the patch right over that. And it's really looks good. Looks real good. We'll just let it set like that for 24 hours and uh, I would think it should be just fine. Well, we did a complete setup on this uh, Morgan Monroe and uh, scalloped out the fingerboard, leveled all the frets, recrowned them, worked on the truss rod, got the action just right, the intonation just right. Uh, it's just real nice. And we installed a pick guard, which is not one of the things that I do very often, but you can see it looks fine. The plastic is still on the pick guard, so it needs to be removed. That's why it doesn't look quite as shiny as it would ordinarily. But uh, I'll leave that on there for the customer to remove. And here's what she sounds like. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know where the tree tops 
Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Merry Christmas to you.